ladies and gentlemen, Debbie Boone. Talent and gifted music rolls off Debbie Boone like she was born with it, and that she was. From a young age, she has been singing professionally as a child. She has won Grammys, an Oscar. She does light up our lives. Debbie Boone, welcome to 100 Huntley Street. Well, thank you. This is so cool for me. This is like really cool for me. I, I, I mean, I was in high school when we were all singing Light Up and I was playing it on my piano. <laughs> and I don't play piano, so you're ahead of me. <laughs> You, when you wrote You Light Up My Life, when it became your song, was it a private or a public ballad? I know now you've said... Well, a actually, it was written by a, a guy named Joe Brooks who wrote it for a movie by the same name, You Light Up My Life. And they gave me a demo of it. I had not done a solo recording of my own yet, but I was recording with my sisters. And when I heard the song, to me, I knew it wasn't written that way, but to me, it really expressed how I felt about the Lord. Uh, so when I was asked to come into the studio and record it, it was just my own private interpretation, and I never really thought that anybody would ever know. It was just what I was singing about. So in your, as you recorded, you were singing to God. Yeah, exactly. And then when it was a huge hit, of course, people would say, you know, was there any special meaning to that song? Were you singing it to a boyfriend or whatever? And I thought, well, if you're going to ask, I was actually singing it like a prayer. It was really 
um, my own private feelings of how I felt about God and, and Him being the light of my life. And uh, so, some people thought that I wrote it because they had heard, heard that interpretation and the guy that wrote it was kind of surprised. <laughs> but <laughs> I really didn't expect to tell anybody. Do you think that's why it went to the charts like it did because it was sung to God as a private prayer in your heart? Uh, I wouldn't presume to say that that is why because uh, certainly there are so many songs that are sung out of love to God that don't become hits like that. Um, I do think God had everything to do with uh, that happening um, for whatever reasons and that song has meant a lot to a lot of people for a lot of different reasons and I'm very very honored to be associated with it. That was 1977. Yes. Uh, number one for 10 weeks on the Billboard charts, Oscar, Grammy. Tell us though what happened before 1977. How, how young were you when you started singing professionally? Well, as, as far back as I can remember we were singing as a family somewhere or another but we really started when I was about 14 years old. My dad was doing a concert tour in the Orient, and he really was so tired of being taken away from his family. And his opening act at the time were the Osmond brothers. And he decided, well, if the Osmonds can travel as a family, why can't I? And he put us in the act as a means of sort of being together and getting to see you know, different you have a places. a meeting about that? Or did you oh, just... it didn't take much, you know. Do you want to come? Yes. <laughs> really? Everybody? Mom, yeah. everybody? Yeah. And we've been singing a lot, you know, as a family, just because we're a musical family. And my mother taught us how to sing in five-part wow. harmony and that kind of thing. So we just put together a show and thought that maybe it would be a one-time thing, but it was so enjoyable and successful that we continued to do it for about 10 years. Now, you, your dad had an image, of course. I was talking about how you, you have outsold Elvis on his number one hit. You, that must have, you must have freaked when that happened. Eh? Well, it's very exciting, but also the music business has expanded so much that there are reasons why records are selling more now than they were then. So I certainly don't take it that I did something that is more noteworthy than Elvis Presley, um, and, and my record has been bypassed since also. I think the first to bypass my record of... of number one on the charts was Kim Carnes with a song called Betty Davis Eyes and since then many um, but the music business is so much bigger than it used to be mm. um, so you know I mean it's still incredible you could still pinch me and make sure I'm not just dreaming <laughs> <laughs> well did you mind that you got the same image as your father because your dad's image was so pervasive Pat Boone mm -hmm. as um, as you know, Mr. Squeaky Clean, and then when you you let up, my life came out. Even mm -hmm. Playgirl dubbed you America's number one virgin. That that must have made you mad. Well, I, it's just I just just certainly didn't. Of your privacy. Exactly, exactly. Invasion. Yeah, I was being asked because I was Pat Boone's daughter, and he was so upfront about his values and beliefs. People felt the freedom to ask me these kinds of questions, which. I, at least as I was growing up, was not a common thing to be asked of anyone. Now it's sort of commonplace to talk about everyone's sexual, you know, orientation or habits or, you know, it's not so rare anymore. But to me, to be asked questions like that, it was kind of like, what business is it of yours? Yes. On the other hand, it gave me a chance to say things that I really believed in and give other people my age sort of somebody to identify with that it isn't strange, that there's nothing weird about it, and there's a lot to, to actually be proud of to make those choices, you know. Meanwhile, you had a childhood sweetheart who was getting sweeter and sweeter all the time through <laughs> the light up my life things. Tell us about Gabri and the two of you getting together. Well, and actually, uh, I was about 18 um, when I met Gabri, and we've pretty much been together ever since, um, but we sort of had a slow, um, kind of friendship and then romance and then you know taking it very it was five years before we got married actually I guess yeah I was 23 uh, when we got married um, but I met him uh, at a Bible study that was taking place in my uh, parents home I actually dated his older brother first for a little while and then met Gabri and started going out with him but our relationship was really based on going to Bible studies together and being friends and then it developed which is a great way to start out because uh, we really knew each other so well before a kind of, you know, wild romance kind of sweeps you off your feet and you're not sure what basis your relationship really has for longevity. Now, he, um, he is also a Hollywood family guy. Mm -hmm. Tell us about, about his family. Well, he's Rosemary Clooney's son, and his father was Jose Ferrer, who was a, uh, an Oscar-winning brilliant actor. 
And uh, so he does come from, uh, you know, a, a very, you know, public family life. And that's one of the things that I think prepared him to be so uh, perfectly matched for me. Is he really learned in growing up uh, and not being the, the, the one that was in the, you know, real center of focus there, to, to have a strong identity and sense of worth that didn't depend on who was getting the most attention around him. So for me, it was great to have a husband who didn't immediately go into crisis when somebody called him Mr. Boone, you know, just a kind of a, a stupid but innocent mistake, you know. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things would intimidate a lot of guys and they wouldn't take very kindly to it and not like to be sort of um, in the back ground all the time, but he's so strong in who he is that that was never an issue with us. You wore his mom's dress last night. Debbie had <laughs> the gown of all gowns Lucky last me. night. It was just Some so... Some hand-me-down, eh? Yes, it was beautiful <laughs> with that long sash yeah. that, uh, well, maybe I have to show you, our audience in another clip of it, um, but you, you, uh, you've you remained very close oh, as families, and, yeah. and even George Clooney is somewhere in there. He's my husband's cousin. Your, it, George yeah. Clooney's your husband? Rosemary's brother, Nick. It's his son, so it's her nephew, and, and my husband grew up with him, and he actually lived at my husband's home for a while when he was just starting out trying to be an actor in Hollywood. So are these Hollywood families just as normal as, you oh, know, small-town yes. Canada families? All absolutely, of absolutely. Are, are they? Really? We see these larger-than-life stars, and same deal, same thing's going yeah, on in their I mean, homes. you know, there are, there's that glamorous side to, you know, getting dressed up and going to big Hollywood events, but normally, you know, I mean, Rosemary's just wearing something comfortable and cooking in the kitchen, and the family's coming in and out, and you know, like everybody else. And I'm so fortunate because we've got a wonderful relationship, and I love my husband's family. His sister is my closest friend, and uh, Rosemary and I just have never had one moment's problem. And how are your mom and dad? They're great. They're great. That's Pat another blessing. Boone. Yeah. Yeah. They live nearby. Parents. They live very close. I'm very lucky. My, I have two sisters that live out of state. Uh, so they don't get to see my parents as much, and my parents don't get to see their children. But my parents live about 15 minutes' drive from where I live, and I see them regularly. Now, you and Gabri have uh, been writing children's books, and uh, Night Lights is one of them. Wonderful bedtime hugs for little ones, and you write it, and Gabri does the illustrations. That's right. And so you tell us about your family. I'll just show you a few pictures. Whoopsie, a few pictures here that, that are in here, but you get the idea these wonderful bedtime <laughs> stories. But tell us a little bit about your family of four. You have twins, you I have do. big kids in college. Big kids, yeah. My son is 18 and uh, just started at Boston University, and his name is Jordan. And then I have Gabrielle and Dustin, who just turned 15, and they're in the 10th grade. And my youngest is Tessa, and she's 12 years old and in junior high. And your husband is a pastor at an Episcopalian church. That would be an Anglican church in right, Canada, right. folks. Uh -huh. But uh, at Beverly Hills Episcopalian, I, <laughs> I, um, I, that's a great title for a church. Beverly Hills. What's church like in Beverly Hills? Well, actually, uh, um, about five years ago, we were really searching for a youth group that my son could really plug into, and. Um, Th this church was associated with the school that my kids go to, where they go to school, and he had friends there, and he plugged into the youth group immediately at All Saints in Beverly Hills. And um, we were very surprised to find out that we also really started to um, find our home there in this church. And my husband started to do a lot of volunteer work, and he was just the person they could count on at any moment to come in and help in any way needed. And this position opened up a little over a year ago to be what they call associate rector at All Saints, which is a sort of pastoral position, but he's a lay person. He's not a priest. Um, and it was just something very unexpected, but something that has just um, been a real blessing because he's fallen into this position. He preaches about every third Sunday, and uh, last night he was cooking for 85 people at a, at a program called Alpha that's an evangelical program. Oh, we know program. Alpha. It's a wonderful program. Yeah. He's doing Alpha, is Yes, he? he is. Great, great. <laughs> we had it just last week on, on, on Huntley Street. We were oh, sharing with our Canadian audience about Alpha. But I'm a leader, and I missed one of those meetings so I could be here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, but my sister-in-law is, is my uh, co-leader. <laughs> Let's talk about you and Jesus Christ. What's happening with you and God, your relationship with God? Well, that's a loaded question, isn't it? There's always something. Uh, you know, it's, it's never a stagnant relationship. There is no relationship, really, that is stagnant. Um, 
But um, with the Lord, you know, it's it's morning by morning. You know, I go in my closet and I you do it pray. mornings. Yep, I do. Uh, uh, when I'm home, I, I'm very fortunate, and I've got this great closet. Literally, you, you know, talk about a prayer closet. I actually go in to my closet because we are in a home where, for the sort of um, just cosmetic uh, look of the house, there's a, a bay stained glass window. But actually, the other side of the window is my closet. So I go in there and I shut the doors and I kneel at this little looks like a little chapel inside my closet <laughs> and that's where I pray and read my devotional things and start my day and ask the Lord to lead me and continue you know showing me you know what he requires of me and um, to fill me with all I need for the day and what has he been uh, massaging into your heart lately um, on an ongoing basis that my trust is not in myself my abilities my uh, goodness or discipline or any of the things that uh, continue continually disappoint me. <laughs> but my trust is in His faithfulness and in His ability and in what He chooses to do. Uh, I, I don't know why I never get over that hump I, and I probably have decided I never will. A type, I'm going to do, do, do a lot yeah, of things. Yeah, and I, and I want to be better and I, I want to do everything I'm supposed to do and every day I kind of look back on yesterday and go, I didn't really do everything I wanted to do. I wasn't everything I wanted to be. Um, but when I look up at, you know, at my cross, I realize it isn't about me. It's about Him. Do you have any advice for people who don't find God quite so approachable, who don't know the beauty of being quiet with Him in the morning? Or How, how does somebody begin, in your mind, to approach the, our great God? I, I think it's... Um, whether you know how or you don't know how, it's, there, there is no set of rules to sit down and say these exact words and, you know, sit in this position or, you know, it's to open your heart and say, I want to know you. I, I want to feel your presence. I want to have a relationship with you. And I don't know how. So you start it. I'm open. I'm listening. Uh, I'm ready for whatever it is that you want to do. And I've never known anybody that has sincerely done something like that that hasn't said there was a clear response, that, that, that God met me in a way I wasn't expecting. Things happened in my day differently. Uh, you know, uh, problems were solved um, much more easily and much more mm -hmm. peacefully when I said, Lord, you take over. You show me how this day is supposed to go. Keep me connected. Um, and it isn't always easy, and we all, you know, have our moments. <laughs> you know, I, I just want to mention the phone line that's on the bottom of the screen, Debbie, because this is the neat thing about when you hear someone like Debbie Boone inviting you to open yourself up to God. If that is too difficult, if that is you need a little help doing it, give us a call. We will pray with you to uh, open your life up to God. You do know what it is to walk in the light of God's love every day, Hollywood family or not. It, it, it works for you. It really does. It really does. And, I, you know, there's so many times that I think um, Christian testimonies can be very off-putting to people who have no experience or they've had some negative representation or whatever. Um, but really, it's a, it's a strength. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I really don't know how people face today's pressures and problems and struggles without knowing, first of all, how loved they are and how cared about they are. I mean, that's a strength in and of itself. But also that there is a, a higher power, that there is someone that you can turn to with your struggles who cares and can actually do something about it. Yeah. You know, I just lost a huge amount, amount of income from a hurricane that blew a wall off a theater. and. I don't know how some of the people that were in this show with me dealt with that kind of loss when you're planning on four weeks of work and pay and it blows away in a hurricane and you don't know that God is your provider. You know, it's frightening. It's terrorizing to think, how am I going to, you know, pay my bills? How am I going to do what I have to do when that expected paycheck is not now coming in? And I know that I can say, Lord, it, it doesn't come from this job. It doesn't come from that person. All my needs are met according to your riches and glory. It's a peace that I have. I don't know where that money's going to come from exactly, but I know that God is good and that God takes care of me. Debbie, I have admired your relationship with Mary, your, um, 
your musical director. Yes. Tell us a little bit about Mary. She's waiting. She's going to play for you in just a moment. But, but tell us about Mary. Well, I'm so fortunate, so fortunate, because not only do I have somebody who is incredibly gifted and talented as a musician She's and a at songwriter. Our piano now, I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, she writes beautiful songs, which I have the privilege of singing, and she's an incredibly gifted musician and very good at being a musical director and handling full orchestras or bands of you know what, however many number we mm. need at the time. But she's also a great friend, so we're out on the road and we laugh and pray and share with, with each other and uh, struggle with each other through, you know, just normal lifetime things. And uh, so I have companionship and, and somebody that's that talented to be out there working with. Debbie, you are just a, a really, it's just been such a blessing to have you with us. Um, you're such a, a gifted artist, and God bless you. You, you. Light Up My Life doesn't happen many times <laughs> in someone's, is there going to be, is there another big hope for your career future? Are you just going to roll you with know, whatever God it, does? I absolutely will roll with it. I've got lots of aspirations, things I'd still like to do. Um, but basically, it's been so interesting over the 20 years since you light up my life, and I don't expect the next 20 years to be any less interesting for <laughs> opportunities and, uh, you know, the, whatever, wherever God wants me is where I want to be. Okay, Debbie, thank you so much. Now get out your hankies, everybody, because this, I call this your five hanky song. <laughs> You have been so transparent. You're showing us all the Debbie Boone personal photo album and a wonderful song about your beautiful family, <laughs> historically, and the family you've built and what you're looking forward to the future. Debbie, thank you, and I'll let you work your way over to okay, Mary. Okay, thank piano. you. And as Debbie sings about family and about home, and you may think, boy, it must be nice to have the perfect Hollywood life, remember that God is you can't go back and make a new, new beginning, but you can have a brand new start today. You can have a brand new start on putting together all the things that are important. So think about that, pray about that. Remember, God wants to talk to you about that. Here's Debbie Boone with her very special song, Home. <laughs> Where there is love overflowing I wish I was home I wish I was back there With the things I've been knowing Wind that makes the tall trees bend into leaning Suddenly the snowflakes that fall have a meaning Sprinkling the scene makes it all clean. Maybe there's a chance for me to go back now that I have some direction. It would sure be nice to be back home. Where there's love and affection And just maybe I can convince time to slow up Giving me enough time in my life just to grow up Still I know where I'm going And I have had my mind spun around in space And yet I've watched it growing If you're listening, God, please don't make it hard to know If we should believe the things that we see Tell us, should we run away? Should we try and stay, or is it better just to 